Tomorrow, Election Day in Florida, and we are choosing a new governor or keeping the incumbent, deciding whether medical marijuana should be legal or not. It's an election that is making national headlines. And joining me now live is the host of NBC's Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. Hi, Chuck. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, happy to do it. Well, we have seen a lot of star power down here in the Sunshine State, but we have not seen the president. Why do you think that is in our governor's race? I am surprised. I thought we would actually at the end of the campaign because this governor's race really, I don't think there's a persuadable voter left. This really feels like a turnout effort all about just finding, uh, in the case of Chris, uh, casual Democrats who don't always vote in midterm elections to vote. Ditto for Rick Scott that he's looking for base uh, conservatives just to gin up the vote. So I did expect, even though we don't see President Obama in a lot of states, I did expect him to bring him here. but. He didn't, and I can tell you there's probably some Democratic congressional candidates, particularly uh, in, uh, uh, particularly up in Tallahassee and down in South Florida, that are probably secretly glad that Charlie Chris didn't do that. Now, a new poll has Rick Scott only a couple of percentage points behind Charlie Crist. Four years ago at this time, mm -hmm. Alex Sink was also a few percentage points ahead of Scott. She ended up losing the race. What do you think is going to happen? Right. Well, I tell you, I, it feels as if this thing is going to be very similar to 2010. Um, you, it's obviously a hold your nose election. You, you get that feeling both candidates are unpopular. Major, more people view them negatively than positively. So it's not like the winner's going to get a mandate. Look, I think this election is going to be decided by the third party candidate here, Wiley. I think it's Adrian Wiley, I believe is his name, the libertarian. If he is getting five, six, seven, eight percent, you know, or getting close to 10 percent, you know, boy, does that, I think, I think that ends up helping Charlie Crist at the end of the day because the Democratic base, he can just rely on a base vote to get him out. But if it's a little bit lower um, and some of those that are truly more libertarian voters, maybe that ends up helping Scott. So I think that the end of the day, I think that's the wild card here. And that's what's making handicapping this race so difficult. And that's why, once again, the national spotlight will be on Florida tomorrow, correct? <laughs> Always one of the places. What's interesting, though, is Florida's not alone here. Most of the battles for the Senate races that we're tracking around the country and a few other governor's races, they're actually playing out very similar to Florida. Both candidates have spent a lot of money. Both candidates are ending the race incredibly unpopular. And there's actually a third candidate that's somehow turning into none of the above or some sort of protest vote. Makes where it interesting. It really has made it just a, a numbers game. Yeah, it really is sort of interesting how the entire country is sort of turned off by both parties at this point in some form or another. All right, and Chuck it's really Todd from NBC, I apologize. We're wrapping you up, but we appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And again, eight is on your side with election coverage, starting with a live special tonight from 7 to 8. Then tomorrow, we'll have an hour-long 11 p.m. newscast with returns as they come in throughout the night.